What's going on, everybody? Just got done with my little workout at the gym this morning. Just wanted to drop a line, see how everybody's doing. <clears throat> I hope you guys are good out there. It's got over that sweet and sour sickening. But um, I wanted to drop a line to you real quick. Now, with my experience in fitness and, and in the fitness industry in the past, I learned the concept of relative and absolute flexibility or I learned, the, or rather, the, the concept of relative flexibility. And when a person has a muscle imbalance in their body, uh, let's take, for example, let's say that you feel like you have um, a problem in your, like you can't stretch your hamstrings, or your hamstrings are tight, or something like that, and no matter how much you try to stretch, you don't get any flexibility, and it feels like it's an uphill battle. Well, with my experience in that industry, sometimes you find that the problem isn't that your hamstrings aren't flexible. The problem is likely could be many things. One could be that your hips are too tight and your hamstrings need to be strengthened rather than stretched. Or the possibility is that your gluteal muscles need to be strengthened in order to extend your hips and create flexibility in your hips. Um, yet other problems can arise with flexibility in other parts of the body that would give the person the illusion or the perception that the, the, the issue with flexibility occurs in that part of the body. Well, in many cases, you could say, oh, you know, your neck or your, your neck, you have a neck uh, flexibility issue. And then later you find out that, you know, the arches of your feet are pronated or your, arch, or your arches are, have fallen, which cause... Um, or there could be a difference in the arches of your feet uh, as far as uh, of how high your arches are, which could reverberate throughout your entire body as a lot, the quote unquote lopsided body. Um, things occurring at the hips or below the hips can affect the whole body. Why do I bring this whole, why do I in introduce my speech or my talk with this, this talk about flexibility? Well, it seems that it terms that there, everything is relative to everything else, and thus there's an absolute reality and a relative reality. Uh, I'm not going to get deep into metaphysics, but I want to say this, and I got this from the uh, the book, The Kabbalion, which is a very interesting book that delves into the nature of things. Like, for example, if you've ever heard that term, as above, so below, and you look at a tree and you see how like the tree branches extend out into... Uh, smaller branches and then into even smaller branches almost appearing as fractals and then if you look below the tree the root system behaves in the same way the branches do above the ground that's a good analogy to give but another analogy to give is the talk of the black pill and the talk of the, the how older men try to coach younger men in in the world and um and i think one of the, some of the greatest coaches that or some of the greatest um, orators on the subject of reality, as far as men go through, I would think would be, I think George Bruno is a really good one. Although at times he can be long-winded and at times all of us can be. I don't, I don't want, I'm not here to disrespect anyone. Um, I do think that Richard Cooper deals more in his relative reality that each of these people have a relative reality and how they see the world and this is why I'm, I'm saying that Richard Cooper's relative reality about the world revolves around building value through things and there's a lot of people that have this not just Rich Cooper but the point of the matter is that when you're young when a man is young his energy is highly concentrated and his testosterone levels are relatively high as compared to the rest of his age, let's say between, let's say in your teens and 20s. At that point, the thing that screams to his body the most is being able to in interact with and be sexual with, if he's heterosexual, the opposite sex. And I'm saying this, and my, my speech is geared towards a heterosexual, although this can apply to homosexual, but in the topic of men and women, as we relate, we are talking about heterosexuality. And I know that I have to make this a point because everybody has a different uh, a different way they, they swing. But for the majority of men, they're heterosexual. And when when a man a young man is is sexually uh, energetic and active, 
the only thing that he can see in his relative reality is his ability to be able to uh, to be able to be uh, get approval from the other sex in, in order to greatly improve his chances of being sexual and having sex. And this is not without a purpose. Of course, this is how the world and people came about and how um, how babies are born and how, you know, legacies of families are started. But this the times that we live in now are not the times of the past. We have a longer lifespan now. Whether or not you want to argue about the quality of life on that lifespan is a different story, but the lifespan is longer now. That's why back in the day when two people used to get married and they used to say, till death do you part, it really meant something because back in, like, let's say in the 1800s, people were dying at the age of 30, you know, uh, 25. <clears throat> so it wouldn't be uncommon for people to get married young because the lifespans were so short. And I say all that to say that what the young men experience, and I've seen a lot of this on a, uh, a YouTuber named Tails. He has these clips that are black pill. And they're really interesting because I don't think of the black pill as something outside of the red pill. A lot of people have of, of defined all these different types of pills. And I only have, and, and in my mind, there are only two pills, the blue pill and the red pill. And, the, and to me, the blue pill represents a relative reality and the red pill represents an absolute reality, which is relative to humans, okay? So, <clears throat> as we know, all of these pills a lot of times can intersect and they can, you know what, let me, let me stay away from that word. A lot of these pills can overlap each other as far as, um, as far as what they cover in terms of their own relative reality and where they all join, you could say that these pills together could have an absolute reality in that sense. The reality is of speaking is this. When an older man speaks from his experiences and talks to a younger man, he has to keep in mind that the time period in which he gained those experiences and the time period in which he was young had certain norms and beliefs and a relative reality regarding the time period that that man was in. The relative reality of today's youth is different from the relative reality of yesterday's youth and the youth before that and before that uh, ad infinitum and will be different from the youth of tomorrow and the day after and the day after and infinitum. So with regards to advising young men based on what you've known, I think that as an older man, me being, I could say me being one of them, I'd have to sit back for a minute and think, what is different now than that was different before? Because right now, a lot of young men <clears throat> are are bringing up the black pill, and they're and they're speaking as if, and what a lot of older men would say is, they're speaking as if if all hope was lost, or they're speaking as if they're uh, super sensitive, or you know they don't they don't you know they can't. That's because they're in the forest and they can't see the outside of the forest. Whereas the old men, older men, have already made it out of the forest have mapped the forest and see the whole forest. So the younger men right now, with the, especially if you look at Tails' uh, YouTube channel and the commenters, you know, I think it's a very interesting. It's sometimes it amuses me of the words that they use in order to deal with, and a lot of times they'll, they'll, they will uh, uh, in, try to throw a, uh, uh, a jab at each other, calling each other a coper and saying Cooper, like Richard Cooper, you're only one, you're only one letter away from being a coper. <laughs> but, um, um, <clears throat> but not to a harp on that, but they throw these these jabs at each other and say that they cope. Well, the honest real the only honest truth is everybody copes with reality in some form or fashion, unless you're an adept and you're like enlightened and, you, and you've totally got beyond the lifestyle of humans and um, the physical bodily pains and the emotional pains and things like that, where you where you've totally like imp like made yourself an impersonal person which I think is a very a small sliver of, of, of humanity. But for the majority of humans, we all have to cope with life in one way or another. And these young men are online and I understand, I feel their pain. I feel their pain because I can feel it from an aspect of my relative reality when I felt that I was unappealing to women and therefore I saw other men that were more appealing to women and I thought that his life was better than my life based on that. But that's because I was looking at life from a certain point of reference. And I think that the uh, the young men who are black pill um, can, as they as they move and, and grow through life, 
they'll start to see things from a different perspective. Now, they might not reach the same exact perspective when they get older because the times that they were growing up when they're younger is different. And that's why I think a lot of, of, of older men have to keep in, into consideration. For example, one of the biggest um, gripes about the cancel culture is that a lot of times people who are getting canceled now are getting canceled for beliefs and things that they had when they were younger and things that they did when they were younger. And I'm not going to speak on, I'm not going to speak on, uh, get too deep into the male and female and how uh, it's, 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 they, some people get canceled for some things and others get canceled for others. But generally speaking, people have been canceled today, even if they've, they've done certain things and been good to certain people and held a certain belief in the recent in the most recent years going back if they go back far enough they can find something that they'll that that will not be that will not coincide with today's reality which are two relative realities and point out how this person is deviated or another word for deviate is perverted from today's reality based on a belief that they had in the past when they had certain experiences in the past and the norms were different in the past. And I think one of the biggest problems with all humans is that we view time as linear. And so, well, not not just that, but you know, the thing about it is, is that we have a, 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 a because of the linear view of time, we have a, a small window by which we we view things at each, at each point in time based on where we are. Versus someone who's been around a lot longer than us has a larger window of experiences. So what was real or the relative reality of most humans, which converge into a relative human absolute reality at a certain point in time, which is not the same as a different point in time can be viewed just like if we're if we're at the same time, but we're in different places, like if we're in the same point in time like in today's world, but we're in different places across the world, we're going to have different experiences. So if I come from one place and go to another, and then I act within the norms of that place, but then someone goes back and say, hey, you know, when he when he lived in Yemen, he was doing this. He's a misogynist. But now that he lives in the in Canada, he, you know, he's so but now they want to cancel you when you're in Canada for things that you did in Yemen, which are commonplace in Yemen. So between different places at the same time and between different times in the same place and you can combine these different time and place factors there are different norms so as far as the black pill is concerned i think that it is a relative reality shared by many men converging into a relative absolute reality among people that adhere to the black pill and this reality is not unwarranted but i do think that also us as older men need to keep in mind not to uh, not to berate and things like that, but to tell the younger men rather than try to tell them how to act, tell them that at one time they were younger and they had a relative reality. And if the young men just hold on and persist, as Vincent, the great Vincent MGTOW said at one time, as long as if you can just hold on, just hold on through these ways of change you get a bigger perspective outside of everything. The same way light behaves in waves and particles. And that light light and photons are generally a wave until observed at a certain point in time becomes a particle. At that point in time, the person who's observing the, the wave of light as a particle can see it one way, whereas another person sees it another way, which carries over into the science carrying over into the metaphysical theoretic the theories of life being relative based on the observer and thus we all have a relative reality but absolutely light moves as a wave and and we're moving through these waves of change and these young men are moving through these waves of change and us as older men can help the younger men by saying you're going through a wave of change right now this is all that's important to you if you need to talk i'm here for you I don't have anything negative to say, but what I will say is hold on and keep and, and try to take all factors into consideration and hold on through these ways of change. Peace.